Okay, this video is for section 9.1 in my 0308 class. Um, I'm not going to be using the PowerPoints, as in you're not going to see the same slides appear, but I will be following along and working right through the examples that you have there. Um, if you hear a little rustling, it's me flipping pages in the background. I was trying to make the video a little smaller in, in terms of a file, so I'm not going to be using the PowerPoints, but I am going to be following right along with those examples that you have there. So the very first thing that you see there and the very first slide on page 79 in section 9.1 talks about inequalities and inequality notation. And that's kind of a review of what we talked about um, when we first started talking about domain and range in the first part of chapter 7. So it talks about x being less than 5 and what that looks like in set builder notation, what that looks like in interval notation, and also what that looks like when you graph it on a number line. So for the first few examples, I'm going to write them all three ways. You're going to see me write them in set builder notation. You're going to see me write them in interval notation. And you're also going to see me draw a graph just so you get an idea of what I expect from you when it comes time for you to take your tests and stuff. So the very first thing is um, just a couple of things about solving inequalities. So the first thing when it comes to solving inequalities is you want to solve that just like you would if you were going to be solving an equation. So use the same steps. As you would. To solve an equation. So don't do anything different. So you'll want to distribute if you have to distribute. You want to combine like terms if you have like terms. And then you want to move your terms around and things of that nature. So you want to do the exact same things that you would do if you're going to be solving a linear equation, something where the highest power of x or whatever your variable happens to be is a first power. The second thing that you have to keep in mind is at the very end of solving that inequality, when you get to the last step where you have to divide by that number in front of your letter, whether it's x or y or whatever, in order to solve the equation, or solve the inequality, I'm sorry, just keep in mind that if you multiply or divide by a negative, so if we ever multiply or divide by a negative, which you wouldn't do that until the very end of solving your inequality, if you ever multiply or divide by a negative number, then you have to reverse the inequality. And the inequality switches or reverses. So if it's less than, it becomes greater than, and vice versa. And if it's less than or equal to, it becomes greater than or equal to, and vice versa. So just be careful about that as you're going through and you're solving inequalities. And the last thing that you need when it comes to solving inequalities is remember that every inequality can be read two ways. So for example, if I solve an inequality and I get down to x is greater than or equal to 3, then that's how you want to read it, is x is greater than or equal to 3. So you'll shade the right direction when you go to shade. And when you go to write it in interval notation, you'll write it correctly in interval notation. But that doesn't mean that in the midst of solving an inequality that you might not get down to what it would look like if you were to read that from right to left, which is that 3 is less than or equal to x. Those are equivalent. So you always want to try to read the inequality as if x were on the left-hand side. So if you ever get to this right here, where 3 is less than or equal to x, when you read it, and you read it with x on the left-hand side, and make sure that you put the correct inequality in there, because you can read two ways. You can read it as x being greater than or equal to 3, or you can read it as 3 being less than or equal to x. And that's true with any inequality that you solve. So just be extremely careful if you ever get down to that point. Now, to avoid having that confusion, then you'll always want to put your variables on the left-hand side. But that doesn't mean that you can't solve it with your variable on the right-hand side. But just be careful when you go to graph it, when you go to write it in interval notation. Just be extremely careful about the way you have it written. All right, so the first one, two, three, four, five examples there 
are just some examples of solving inequalities. So there's a variety of different steps that are in solving these inequalities, and I just want to talk to you and mention a few things as I work through um, some of these examples. So the first one that you have there on the top of page 80, the first slide there, says solve negative 5y is less than or equal to negative 2y plus 21. So we want to solve that inequality exactly like we would solve any equation. So if we were going to solve negative 5y were equal to negative 2y plus 21, then we would do the exact same steps here to solve where negative 5y is less than or equal to negative 2y plus 21. So first thing we do is we look and see can we simplify either side. There's really nothing that we can do to simplify either side. And then we would try to get our variables on the same side. So, when I move a term across the inequality sign, so in this case, when I move negative 2y to the other side, I'm going to be adding 2y. Now, nothing happens to the inequality when you add or subtract. So, adding something to both sides doesn't change that inequality, doesn't do anything. It's only on the very last step when I multiply or divide. If I multiply or divide by a negative, then I have to turn that inequality around. So, adding 2y to both sides, this becomes negative 3y is less than or equal to 21. So now, just like you would solve negative 3y equals 21 is the same way I'm going to solve negative 3y is less than or equal to 21. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So when I divide by the negative 3, then I'm left with what I want, which is y. But since I just divided by a negative 3, that less than or equal to reverses and becomes greater than or equal to because of that second property that I mentioned back to you just a minute ago when it comes to solving inequalities. And then I just do 21 divided by negative 3. And if I take 21 and I divide it by negative 3, I get negative 7. So I get y is greater than or equal to negative 7, which basically that is your set builder notation. I mean, you could fancy it up and put the braces around it and say the set of all y's such that y is greater than or equal to negative 7, but basically you just said the same thing. You said that y was greater than or equal to negative 7. So there's my set builder notation. You also have to be able to plot that on a number line. So y being greater than or equal to negative 7, so you don't have to go out negative 7 tick marks, but find 0 for me to let you know where negative 7 is located. And then negative 7 will be down here to the left of 0. And then I want everything that's greater than or equal to that. So just like we did when we were writing domain and range. Anytime we use greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, that's when we're going to use a bracket on our number line here. So I'm going to have a bracket at negative 7. And I want to shade everything that is greater than that. So everything greater than that would be everything to the right of negative 7. So I'm going to shade everything to the right of negative 7. So there's my graph on a number line. And then an interval notation. An interval notation, that would be bracket negative 7, comma. And if you look at where you shade on your number line, you shaded from negative 7 all the way to the right. So you're going all the way to positive infinity. So there would be an interval notation. It would be everything from negative 7 all the way to infinity. So on any particular problem, I could ask you to graph it, or I could ask you to write it in interval notation. I mean, when you solve it, you had your set builder notation. But when you, I could ask you to graph it on a number line and you'd give me the picture, or I could ask you to write it in interval notation and you'd give me the interval there on the right. So make sure you can do it both ways whenever you are going to uh, solve these problems. All right, so a couple examples. So the next example there, example 4 on uh, the bottom of page 80, that slide there. It says that 2x minus 7, so 2x minus 7 is greater than 19. So when I solve that inequality, I solve it just like I would solve any old equation. So I've got to move 7 over, so I have to add 7 and add 7 to both sides. And that would give me that 2x is greater than 19 plus 7, which is 26. And then I would solve for x by dividing by that number in front of x. So I would divide by 2, and I would divide by 2. Now, I've divided by a positive, so nothing happens to my inequality sign. 
This is x is greater than, and then I just figure out what 26 divided by 2 is. And in this case, 26 divided by 2 is 13. So I get x is greater than 13. So again, number line, here's 0. 13 is way up here somewhere. And then x being greater than, since we have strictly uh, strict inequality, a strict greater than, I'm going to use a parentheses. And I want everything that's greater than 13, so I'm shading everything to the right of 13. So there's the picture you would give me for a number line. And then in interval notation, you have parentheses 13 to where you shaded, which was 2 positive infinity since we shaded everything to the right. So again, it's whether that number you divide by is positive or negative determines whether you reverse that inequality. So make sure you're, you're careful about that as you're going through and solving. Just watch your signs and watch the way your inequality is. Be extremely careful about those things. Okay. The next example there has fractions in it. So we have that negative 3 fourths times x plus 1 sixteenth is strictly less than negative 5 eighths. So I want to solve that just like I would solve an equation. And one of the techniques you have to help you solve equations is to clear fractions. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do, is I'm going to clear fractions. And I'm going to clear all my fractions here by multiplying through by the common denominator, or by the least common multiple. And for 4, 16, and 8, my LCM is going to be 16. So I'm going to get rid of my fractions, which is one of the techniques you do to solve equations. So I'm using that to solve my inequalities. So I'm going to multiply all three of my terms by 16. So when I multiply all three of those terms by 16, then this is 16 over 1 times negative 3 fourths x plus, and then I have 16 over 1 times 1 over 16, and that's still going to be less than, and I have 16 over 1 I'm going to multiply by negative 5 over 8. So I just multiplied every one of my terms by 16. So basically I distributed 16 into all three of my terms. So now I can go back and this should clear my fractions for me. So 16 times negative 3 fourths. You can either multiply straight across or I can reduce. So 4 becomes 1, 16 becomes 4. And so I have 4 times negative 3x. Watch your signs. That's going to be negative 12x plus... 16, but I multiply it by 1 16th, my 16 is reduced to 1. And so this is negative 12x plus 1. It is still less than because I multiplied through by a positive 16. And over here on the right-hand side, 8 becomes 1 and 16 becomes 2. And then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. So again, I just multiplied everything through by 16. And now, I'm just going to keep solving this equation. So now I'm back to my old steps. So I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. So I'm going to do minus 1 and minus 1. And that gives me that negative 12x is less than negative 11. And so now, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 12. So when I divide both sides by negative 12, and I divide by negative 12, and I divide by negative 12, I just divided by a negative number, so my inequality reverses. That less than becomes greater than. And then I have a negative 11 divided by a negative 12. A negative divided by a negative turns this into a positive. And 11 12, so I can't do anything with it. All I can do is just leave it as 11 over 12. That's not a fraction that I can reduce or anything like that. So that's how I go through and solve the inequality. Now, Again, you're going to have to graph that and write that in interval notation. So when I graph that, I've got to be able to, to tell that you know where 11 twelfths is. So when I put this on a number line, I have 0 and I have 1, and 11 twelfths is in between those two fractions, in between those two integers, sorry. So 11 over 12 is in between 0 and 1. So I would put me a a mark in here between 0 and 1. I'm going to put it closer to 1 because 11 twelfths is closer to 1 than it is to 0. 12 twelfths will be 1, so 11 twelfths is real close to 1. And then again, I'm going to use a parentheses, and I'm going to shade everything greater than that, so I'm going to shade everything to the right. So there would be my picture on a number line, 
and then in interval notation, I'd have a parenthesis 11 over 12. And when x is greater than 11 twelfths, that's everything from 11 twelfths all the way to infinity. All right, so again, watch your signs when you're doing this, okay? It's determined upon the number that you divided by whether you s reverse that inequality. And that's what students struggle with the most that I see is they get mixed up between what they should do with the inequality there. But only if you multiply or divide by a negative would you reverse the inequality. So watch that and be careful. And then make sure you know how to graph them on a number line and make sure you know how to put them into interval notation as well. Okay, so I have a couple more examples, and um, then I'll be done with 9.1. So the next inequality there says that 4m plus 7 is going to be greater than or equal to 14 times m minus 3. So just if like you were going to solve the equation, first thing that I would do is I would distribute 14 into both of those terms. So left-hand side, nothing I can do, just 4m plus 7 is going to be greater than or equal to right-hand side. I can distribute 14. So 14 times m gives me 14m, and 14 times negative 3 gives me negative 42, if I distribute that 14 into both of those terms. OK, so now I have a choice as to which way I can move stuff. So I'm going to work this two ways, not to confuse you, but I just want to make sure you understand what it would look like either way that you did it. Now. If you want to keep your variable on the left-hand side, if I want to keep my variable on the left-hand side, then I'm going to subtract 14m and subtract 14m. And then I'm going to move my 7. So I'm going to subtract 7, and I'm going to subtract 7. So that's the way I would move stuff if I was going to keep that variable on the left-hand side. If I do that, I get negative 10m is greater than or equal to negative 49 if I solve my inequality in that manner. And then I would have to divide by negative 10 and divide by negative 10. And since I just divided by a negative, my inequality would reverse, and that greater than or equal to would turn into less than or equal to. And negative 49 divided by negative 10, you can either keep it as a fraction. It would be 49 tenths. Or if you prefer the decimal, 49 tenths would be 4 and 9 tenths or 4.9. Either way. doesn't matter how you write your answer. Probably fraction or a simplified fraction is nicer, but either way. So then I'd have to graph that on a number line. So graph m is less than or equal to 49 tenths. So I come over here on number line. So 49 tenths or 4 and 9 tenths is between 4 and 5 closer to 5 than it is to 4. So I'd put me a marker there at 49 tenths. And then I'm going to shade everything less than or equal to. So equality, I use a bracket. And everything less than that, I would shade everything to the left. And then in interval notation, that would be everything from negative infinity to 49 over 10 or 4.9, whichever you prefer, with my bracket. So that's what it would look like. Now again, I just want to make sure that you see both ways. So what I could have done on my line there, where I have 4m plus 7, so uh, another approach, where I have 4m plus 7 is greater than or equal to 14m minus 42. The other way I could have done it is I could have moved my variable to the right-hand side. So I could have subtracted 4m and subtracted 4m. And that would have forced me to add 42 and add 42 to both sides. And if I had taken this approach, I would have positive 49 is greater than or equal to positive 10m. So now when I solved, I would be dividing both sides by positive 10. I'd be dividing by 10, and I'd be dividing by 10. If I divide by a positive, nothing happens to my inequality. So I have that 49 over 10 is greater than or equal to m. So nothing ever happened to my inequality. But again, like I told you, the very first slide that you have there where I wrote those few notes, there's two ways that you can read every inequality. So saying that 49 tenths is greater than or equal to m 
is the equivalent of saying that m is less than or equal to 49 over 10, which is what we got when we worked it the other way. So it doesn't matter which approach you take, which way you work it, your final answer is going to be the same. But just make sure that you do your steps correctly and that you don't reverse that inequality unless you multiply or divide by a negative. And if I work it the way you see on your screen right now, I never had to reverse that inequality because I never multiplied or divided by a negative. Just this last line right here is just the two different ways you have to read every inequality. And I graph it the same way and write it in the interval notation the same way. So after that, everything would be the same. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now this next one that you see there, it looks ugly, looks long and complicated. But it's just to help you see that it doesn't matter what your step, what, how ugly it looks, the steps you go through to solve don't, don't change. So I'm not going to write the first line there. But what you see there are brackets, and within those brackets you have parentheses on both sides of that inequality. So left-hand side, I'm going to start on the inside, I'm going to work my way out. So I have my 5 times everything that's in this bracket, inside the bracket. I, have a, I come to a distributive property. I have 3 times 7 minus t. If I distribute my 3, that becomes 21 minus 3t. And then I have a minus 4 times 8 plus 2t. So then I would have to distribute my negative 4. And it would become negative 32 minus 8t. So that would be the left-hand side. The right-hand side, I'm sorry. One more thing on the, le the left-hand side. The one last thing there is a minus 20. Sorry about that. I forgot the minus 20. But it's not inside the bracket, so that 5 that I have sitting out there on the left does not go with the negative 20 because it's not, the negative 20 is not inside the brackets. On the right-hand side, less than or equal to, I have that negative 6 on the outside there. And then inside there, I have a 2 times 6 minus 3t. So that would give me 12 minus 6t. So that would be 12 minus 6t, and then minus 4. So all I did was distribute on both sides, on the inside there. I distributed the 3, I distributed the negative 4, and then I distributed the 2. And again, I didn't distribute the 2 to the negative 4 out there because that 2 is not, that negative 4 is not in parentheses with the 6 minus 3t. So be careful about that. All right, so now I'm still working on the inside. So this is five times. I'm going to combine like terms. Inside here, I have a negative 3t and a negative 8t. And that's going to give me negative 11t. And then I have a 21 and a negative 32. And 21 minus 32 is going to give me negative 11. So I have five times, and I have a negative 11t minus 11 minus my 20. And that's going to be less than or equal to negative 6 times. And inside there, I have negative 6t. And then 12 minus 4 is positive 8. So that becomes plus 8. Again, still just simplifying everything that I can. All right, left-hand side. I'm going to distribute my 5 into just the two terms inside the bracket. And that becomes negative 55t minus 55 minus 20 is less than or equal to, I'm going to distribute my negative 6 into both of my terms here. If I distribute my negative 6 in there, that becomes a positive 36t, and negative 6 times 8 is negative 48 when I distribute. Still simplifying. Left-hand side, negative 55 and negative 20 are like terms. I can put those together. And so I get negative 55t minus 75. Negative 55 and negative 20 is negative 75. And that's less than or equal to 36t minus 48. So all that, I never moved anything around. I'm just simplifying both sides. So now, at this point, this is where I want to start moving my terms and trying to get terms on the same side. So again, if you don't have to worry about trying to read the other way when you're solving inequalities, take your variable to the left-hand side, which is what I'm fixing to do. So I'm going to subtract 36t and subtract 36t. 
So that's going to force me to add 75 and add 75 to both sides. So when I do that, I have that negative 91t is less than or equal to negative 48 plus 75 is 27. And so now, to solve this for t, I need to divide both sides by negative 91. So you divide by negative 91, divide by negative 91. So since I just divided by a negative, this becomes t is greater than or equal to, and 27 divided by negative 91 is just negative 27 over 91. I can't reduce that. 27 and 91 don't have any common factors, so there's my final answer. So last thing, graphing that, number line, negative 27 over 91. That's a fraction that's between 0 and negative 1. It's a little closer to 0 than it is to, to negative 1. So there's negative 27 over 91. And I want everything that's greater than or equal to that. So I'm going to shade everything to the right. And then in interval notation, that's going to be negative 27 over 91 with a bracket all the way to infinity. So those are several nice examples for you to go by just to help you when it comes to solving inequalities. And so use those examples to help you go by when you're working on your homework for 9.1. Watch your signs as far as positive and negatives. Be careful about when you reverse your inequality and, and just use the same steps that you would to solve an equation. But just keep in mind that if you multiply the divide by a negative, you've got to reverse that inequality. And you may have to turn the inequality around when you're reading it if you end up with your variables on the right-hand side, which could happen to you. The last thing there is a word problem. And so it says, at your new job, you can be paid in one of two ways. Plan A will pay you $300 a month. So here's plan A. Plan A will be $300 per month. So $300 per month. plus $9 an hour, so $9 per hour. So what's changing on me here is the number of hours. I mean, it's fixed as far as what I'm getting paid per month. I'm getting paid $300 each month, and then they're going to pay me $9 per hour. So it depends on how many hours I work, what I'm going to get paid. So I'm going to let X be the number of hours. If I do that, then plan A becomes that fixed amount of $300 plus 9 times X, 9 times however many hours I work. And then it says that plan B is going to pay a flat rate of $12.50 an hour. So that would be $12.50 times X. And it says for how many hours, so we're looking for X, for how many hours is plan B the better option. Now, in terms of being the better option, I want to figure out how many hours I need to work for plan B to pay me more money. So I need plan B to be better. So I need plan B to be greater than plan A. If I'm to making more money, money off of plan B. So I need to figure out how many hours I have to work so that plan B was the better option, or plan B was greater than plan A. So I'm trying to figure out when 1250 times X, because that's what we came up for plan B, is greater than plan A, which is 300 plus 9X. So if I subtract 9X on both sides, if I do minus 9X and minus 9X on both sides, Then I get that $3.50 times x, or 3.5 times x, has got to be greater than 300. And so then I have to divide both sides by 3 and a half. So I have to divide by 3 and a half, and divide by 3 and a half on both sides. And so make sure you bring a calculator with you in case you come across some word problems and stuff, have your calculator with you. So if you take 300 and you divide it by 3 and a half, what you get, 
Now we're going to round this because we get a decimal. We get that x is greater than 85 point, I'm going to call it 85.7. So x is greater than 85.7. Now, it says for how many hours is plan B the better option? So I've got to work more than 85 hours because it's, I came up with 85 and 7 tenths. I've got to work more than 85 hours in one month so that plan B is the better option than plan A. So the question says for how many hours is plan B the better option? So plan B is better. For I'm going to round this up to 86 hours or more. So I have to work at least 86 hours. So 86 hours or more than 86 hours so that plan B was the better option than plan A. So you're going to have some word problems, but just translate what they give you into a couple of expressions and then use the correct inequality in there based upon how they word it in the problem so you can uh, answer the question that they ask you. All right, so that's it for 9.1. I'm going to stop it there, and then I'm going to make another video that covers just the first part of 9.2, and then that way after spring break we can pick up with compound inequalities.